and welcome to Catechrist Magazine. We can be found on the web at www.catechrist.com. My name is Jason J. Rock Houston, and um, I'm really happy to um, be speaking once again. It's been a while since I last uh, spoke with uh, Leatherworth drummer uh, Dean Roberts. How are you doing today, Dean? I'm good. Hello to all out there, and I hope everyone's doing well in this whole COVID thing. Yeah, yeah, and how, how's that been for you? I mean, um, like a lot of people, I imagine, it's um, been a while since you've done any live shows or anything like that. Have you been pretty much working on the new album here for the last few years yeah uh, we played m3 in may or and then um did a show at rock timber you know just last um kind of warm-up shows was, but, and how did those go i mean um they were fun you know it was all good yeah and, and i guess a good place to start the interview off um dean is um you know like like a lot of bands you guys have uh, gone um through you know numerous lineup changes and um and you're kind of a um you know the remaining original member. What's um, what's kept you at it? You know all these years. <clears throat> I just like to play music, man. At the end of the day, I like to play music, and uh, um, there's shows that we get to play to make it fun. You know. Yeah, and the, the new it. yeah the new album is called um, um, uh, Kill Kill the Hunted. Um, and I gotta tell people, you know, um, in prepping for the interview, I got a chance to hear the um, entire new C. And I'll tell you, um, not only is it a great um, Leatherwood CD, but I think it's. Um, just overall, a great metal album. I mean, um, first thing you guys have done in years, and what a comeback! Isn't it funny, dude? A drummer, you yeah. know, which none of the original guys, um, and, and and it turned out to, uh, it turned out pretty freaking goddamn good, you know. Yeah, you know, well, a lot of people may not realize that, you know, a lot of times when you go in and you record an album, or um, you know, music-wise, um, it all starts with the drums. Well, no, they, I mean, mo most songs start with the writing, you know. And, yeah, yeah. And, Thing. Jeff was involved, and he came up with a lot of the riffs and a lot of the arrangements. And you know, he's always been—he's always been the Leatherwolf songwriter that just you know does the deal. You know, uh -huh. he can write the stuff. You know. And so, um, you know, being that you're the original guy, I, I mean, um, you're kind of a leader of the band. You're the one that's kind of um, you know driving the ship. So, how involved are you with the writing? I mean, being a drummer and all. <clears throat> I get to do arranging. Um, I get to do ideas. I get to do vocals. I get to do uh, song, uh, write words, and you know, come up with. On this one, I got to deal with the guitar player, so we can come up with the, the second and third guitar lines. Mm -hmm. And um, so I just got to, you know, be a little more uh, adventurous in arrangements and and, and um, guitar lines and, and vocals. You know, I wrote uh, "Kill the Hunted," yeah. and then um, I wrote uh, the song "Nobody," and then uh, Carrie did came up with some of the riffs for the song and Keith wrote the vocals and uh, so anyway, this is the first time I've actually finished the song Kill the Hunt but I finished it from beginning to end and Robbie helped out with it and so did Keith and um, you yeah. know it was just interesting you know that uh, I mean do you know the song I'm talking about Kill the Hunted? Oh yeah that's the title track and um, I, I think that's kind of um, the song that really kind of um, kind of sets the um, sets the you know rest of the album you know it's kind of a blueprint I think <laughs> It's just interesting because I never wrote nothing in the past. Cause that, uh -huh. was, that was always Carrie and Jeff and Mike and those guys. And um, you know, so I write a song and it turns out to sound like Leatherwolf. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, you're the one guy that's been there all these years, so I mean, yeah, it's you're... too funny. And, you know, even on that song, I got to I got to play the rhythm guitar because you know, yeah. I came up with the riff, you know. Yeah. And, and, I, and so I actually got to play a little bit of guitar on it and yeah. you know, write the words, come with the melodies. It's just you know, it's fun. I mean, that, to me, that's what music's all about. It's about about creativity. Yeah, you know? and you know, um, one of my all-time favorite drummers I've had a um, had a chance to interview a couple times, um, Carmine Apiece. I mean, he's one of my all-time favorite drummers. I mean, not just because he's a great drummer, but I don't think people realize even that like every band Carmine has ever been in, he's like really driven the band. And, um, you know, he's also a great producer, great songwriter. I mean, so, you know, drummers, I think, oftentimes do not get the credit they deserve. Oh, there's no doubt, you know. I mean, in the Leatherwolf um, history, you know, Drummers don't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's but, all about it's all about those guys, and they're 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 just that self centered, and that's just what they believe. That's one of the reasons I'm I don't deal with them anymore. Yeah, you know, and so like, uh, if you don't mind going into like, um, like I I, I believe um, like Darren Householder, it was one of the guitar players you had in the band, and you've gone like I said through numerous. Um, so let's talk about some of the new guys that you know play on the new album with you. Well, officially, um. There hasn't been that many. There's been Rob Math. Okay. There's been um, Greg Erba, and there's been uh, one other guy. 
you know, Joey Tafoya was going to play, but he, he started to, to play and then he um, went to play um, with Graham Bonin, you know. So we really haven't had that many other guitar players. Uh, okay, okay. And, um... and, and Eric Halpern came in, um, you know, back on the on the World Asylum, and then he just played a couple parts, you know. Okay. But at the end of the day, um, um, that's because Carrie and Mike didn't want to do anything, you know. So Yeah. You know, so there hasn't been that many, you know, even though it may appear to be that many. Yeah. And then, um, you know, like when we played uh, Rock Hard in 2018, we had um, Cole and Luke, Luke, uh, two younger guys that were good guitar players. They came in and played. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. And um, like I said, you're, you're, I guess, just the driving force now. When the other guys didn't want to do leather with anymore, more, and they kind of decided to move on to other um, things, I mean, I, I'm assuming they gave you your blessing to continue on with uh, leather with or... No, not really. Okay, well, well, the important thing is you're you're carrying the flag. But um, like I said, um, I'm listening to this entire new album, and um, just from top to bottom, it's 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 killer, and um, not not just a great Leatherworth album, but I think uh, um, you know a, a great metal album. I mean, it's everything you'd want a, a metal album to be. Well, that's the thing is, um, you know, this, this is basically me, Rob Math, um, Barry Sparks, and Keith Adamiak. And, and Barry yeah. Sparks, let me tell you, one of um, my all-time favorite bass players. I mean, um, I seen him when he used to play with, um, you know, Dawkins, and I know he's been involved with a lot of, you know, he's, he's a great songwriter in his own right. So, um, how, how did you hook up with him? He he is one of the best bass players on this planet. Plus, he can play guitar. Plus, he's creative as all hell. You know, I'm surprised um, he hasn't. Um, He's just not in some other bigger band in the United States because he's so goddamn good and he's so nice, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, and, and, and I gotta play with him. Yeah, I mean hey, that's dude. the thing. I mean, you look at his list of credits: Ink, Faye, Malmsteen, Doc, and Michael Schenker. I mean, um, that's why he plays with those level um, of players, you know. Yeah, because he's that good. He's up there with you know, freaking bass player from um, Rush. He's up there with you know. Um, Iron Maiden guy, you know, um, Steve, Steve Harris, Harris, yeah, Geezer, yeah, I mean, all those guys, I mean, yeah, uh, one of his favorite bass players is Geezer Butler, you know, and, and, uh, and then you just listen to, he's, dude, he's just another level, man, he, he just made me sound way better than I am, you know, <laughs> well, I mean, you, you really got a great team of players, and, and, and the singer you got, I mean, he's, he's killing, I, um, I'm, I'm not really, um, never heard of him before, but, uh, tell me how you, how you hooked up with him. Okay. He honestly, he honestly wanted to be more in the blues band. He, he didn't want to play shows with Leather Wolf. Wanted to play with Great White, and um, I just got over it, you know. So okay. luckily enough for me, I knew someone that knew a couple people, and then um, I went on the internet and I saw this kid playing and singing, and he could sing. And and so um, we were working on the demo um, to, 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 uh, to to get a record deal with a. Uh, nuclear blast oh wow and he came over the next day and me and robbie worked on the song only the wicked yeah. and we we came up with the melodies and came up with the words and um he sang it and and when he sang it and we just go fuck this guy can sing and he can you know he's like he's like no one knows who he is and he could feel he could just he was just killer my wife said dude he's the man you, you look no further and so let, let me ask you dean when, when you got the new lineup together had you um um, had you already written some of these songs, or like um, um, once you got the new lineup intact, you, you guys started writing these tunes? No, no, the, the, we started writing way before, and then we got Barry in the beginning, but the songs were done. Wow. Um, at least the arrangements, you know, yeah. and, and, the, and the riffs. Wow, and so. And, um, so, and, so, and so then um, um, I just ran into issues with Jeff Gayer, um, you know, quitting five times, wanting <laughs> all this stuff, and. It, it, drama queen stuff but I just I was over it. I said I'm moving on and so then I sat down with Robbie we had a meeting and Rob uh, I said look at dude let's just finish this and um, the bass is done the drum's done you in he goes I'm in and, and Nuclear Blast I mean that, that's a pretty um, that's a pretty good record um, company to, to be back in leather with how did you hook up with them was it a matter of um... well honestly here, here's, here's the deal is, is everyone passed on this record uh, yeah wow uh, yeah, Nuclear Blast passed uh, SPV you know they're, they're all I think they're all in love with that Leather Wolf on the game, you know? Yeah, I mean, well... And a lot of the guys just couldn't even listen to the record, which is kind of weird, you know, when you... I mean, when you listen to the record, forget about who's, who it is playing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just, 
it's a damn good classic metal record. You know, who's doing that stuff these days? Oh, 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 yeah. I mean, um, see, that's the thing. So, like, I mean, all these, like, you, you have all these labels or that you try to get a deal with, and like you say, they initially turn it down because oh, Leatherworth, they're a bunch of has bands. It's a band from the '80s, but like when you started, kind of. Um, letting people hear some of these songs or these demos you had I mean I don't see how they could turn that down they did dude everyone passed on us nobody so we had we had to do, we had to work out a couple little deals just to you know, just to get it out there you know <laughs> we're, we just, we're just doing this on our own dude or, and if it wasn't for me and me paying for everything and doing what I do these songs wouldn't be here you know wow and so like um, you really are um, like um, the way you're telling me like a do it yourself band so like uh, I mean um, I, I'm assuming you have a home studio and, and all that, and, and, and so I, I think you got every right to kind of, um, you know, be the guy to call the shots. I mean, if everything kind of, um, you know, it's, it's not so much that. I mean, because when you're writing music, it's 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 um it's 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 from the heart. You know, you're yeah. just creating music. It's not about control or dictatorship no. or anything. Yeah. It's about it's a freedom of expression, and and you know, you, you never know what's gonna hit. No, and, it's gonna go till the end, you know. Yeah, and, and you kind of feel like I mean, like I said, uh, um, Dean Roberts is kind of the guy. I mean, even when I talked to you, like about you know, interviewed you, I think the last time about ten years ago, Dean Roberts was still kind of the one kind of steering the sh uh, ship or kind of um, you know carrying the Leatherworth flag, if you will. I mean, how did it feel like? Did you kind of feel like the other original guys kind of um, gave up on Leatherworth and wanted to move on to greener pastures, where you're kind of the guy, like I said, kind of. Um, Believing, still believing, the one that guy that believes in Leatherwolf? Well, uh, at the end of the day, um, I just, I like the music. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And at the end of the day, you know, Jeff Gare was the main songwriter of that music, you know? And at the end of the day, um, those guys wrote off his coattail. Yeah. Okay, you know, and, yeah. And, 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 you know, when he was gone, it was, it was definitely noticeable, you know? Oh, oh sure, and so um, you got you got a great uh, great new album coming out. Um, when does the album come out again, Dean? I think it's November eleventh. And so, what are your plans as far as um, you got any plans as far as um, doing live shows or, or any touring behind this? Oh yeah, we're gonna go play. And so we um, just gotta wait to see what happens, you know. Yeah, and so I mean, I, I think you, I, I mean what I've heard on the new CD. I think when once people hear it, they're gonna be quite impressed because again, it's just a great sounding album. From top to bottom, and and um, I couldn't find like a single, um, a single dud track on there. I mean, it's it's all pretty killer to me. And um, so, not only do you have, see, that's the thing too. Leatherwood could kind of be one of those bands that kind of just lived on their legacy. Because let's be honest, not a lot of people are buying CDs like they used to. But I'm an old school guy. I still love to buy music. So the fact that you guys are a band that's still putting out new music, I think that's pretty killer. Well, I mean, I've always been. Um I mean, uh, the cool thing about not having anybody else around is um, make an album that has no fluff on it, and you can just make something that just just makes you freaking bleed, you know, it just yeah. like kills you, you know. And, and there's no there's no wimp or how do I say this? There's no I run, I hide away. There's no uh, or me sad this yeah. blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'm just I'm just so like not that guy, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of made sure that uh that when we do this stuff. Um, we try to stay on the positive side of things and just try to deliver a message that's kind of positive and supportive, you know? Oh, sure. Instead of, instead of poor me stuff, you know? Oh, yeah, sure. And so, I mean, that, you know, when, when you're going to, um, like, when, when you go through such, such a mass, you know, you change, like, all the other guys in the band or if other guys don't want to do it anymore, so you have to find new players. Um, you know, that's one thing is, can they write great music? Can they record? I think you guys have kind of um, proven the test with the new album. But the other thing is, um, like, what was it like when you first get together with the new guys and you start rehearsing the old um, material? Like, do you tell them, like, hey guys, I want you to kind of stick kind of true to the way the original guys played it, or do you allow them to kind of um, put their spin on the uh, uh, older uh, material? Now, the, the, when, when you're playing Leatherwolf stuff, the, the parts are already written. Yeah, yeah. You, you have to learn the parts. So you, you don't change the harmony, you don't change the triple. Yeah. It's done, so you got to learn yeah. the part, you know, so it's a little bit of work. I mean, you don't you don't change the classic arrangement of a sure, song. You sure. just play the song, you know. Yeah. I mean, there's always freedom in leads, you know. Yeah. But but, but you're you're pretty much playing what was the, how it was written. And then another thing I was reading that um, you, um, you had Joel Holkstra from White Snake, of course, um, guest on the album. Talk a little about um, 
what was like um, getting him to play on the album and um, he, he only played a part on one song on this record but he played two full on leads and some other stuff that's going to come out next year oh cool cool and um, and so it was just nice having other people do stuff yeah yeah especially when they they got their own character and they got their own thing and it's just it's just cool when you just sit there and listen to it you just go wow that's just cool yeah and so um now, now you said like a lot of the, a lot of uh, record companies initially passed on including nuclear blast who eventually signed the band so let me ask you when you when you finally signed on the dotted line with nuclear blast and you turned in the final product what was the response then well nuclear pass nuclear blast passed on us so we don't we're not signed to any label really except oh. for or for distribution oh know? okay okay i got you okay um and, and so you know I, I that's why i think uh you know um, it, you know, who doesn't want to be signed to a label, but a, a lot of bands aren't these days. And I, I think one cool aspect about uh, being an independent, you know, having your own independent um, label or whatever, putting it out yourself, is, you know, if it's a big hit with the fans, then then the band goes, you know, the band's the one that makes all the money and you, you get to put it all back into the band as opposed to, you know, some, some um, record label kind of getting all the, you know, getting more money. Than even the band, uh, uh, I guess. So I think that's one cool aspect, and you kind of get to control your um, own destiny, so to speak. But also, of course, you got to put more of your own money into it. Pretty much. Hey, what's your email? Uh, my my email is um, rockzone um, one r o c k z o n e, and then z o n e. Yeah, and then the number one o n e. So it should be rockzone one at yahoo.com. Um, I, 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 um, yeah, I can email that to you, um, Dean, later, but... Here, dude, um, I'll send you over something, but just don't play it for anybody. Sure, sure, I... I, I, I re- you can, I guess, it's, but this is a, a Joel Holster lead. Okay. In a song, in, in an old song. Uh-huh. And so let, let me ask you, as far as um, reaching out to Joel Holstra, was it just a matter of you being a fan of um, what he does, or did you think he would be... Um, the right guy to like do a solo on the song? No, it was just um, our manager knew knew of him and um, said he was a nice guy, and, and oh. so we were just looking for other. Uh, you know, you got eleven songs, you got like yeah, 30, yeah. 30, 30, 40 leads to play. You know, so you're like, okay, how do we lighten the load on Rob? You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you know, and, and um, oh, and so um, did Joel kind of just kind of did he send you like um. His track was he actually in the studio with you guys? No, he would send me his track from his from his studio. Oh, okay. And um, I'm assuming because um, a lot of the album was probably recorded during COVID, um, that you guys kind of recorded um, like remotely or over Zoom or something like that. Um, he would just send me his tracks. He would record in in his, in his studio. I uh. I recorded my drums in a in a studio in San Diego. Oh, okay. And then I, and then I have a studio for for the guitar tracks and for, for vocals. Oh wow, wow. And so um, let's talk a little bit about you, Dean. As far as um, when you were growing up, I mean, who were some of your um, drum heroes? You know, the guys that influenced you to um, want to become a drummer. John Bonham. John Bonham. Wow, can't can't go Neil wrong Pert. with Neil Peart. Yeah, you know Neil Peart. Um, what I love about Neil Peart, a lot of people don't even realize, um, 40 years after the fact, he's still the new guy in Rush, and um, he's, you know, so much more than just a drummer. People don't even realize he's the one that wrote all the lyrics for those, all those great Rush songs we yeah, love. Yeah, 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 he, he did. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, yeah. Um, and you just never know, and, and like, if they never had Neil Peart, I mean, Rush may have been a very different sounding band, you know? Well, you change any one of those guys out, it's going to be a whole different experience, you know? I mean, that's what I've learned with guitar players and yeah. bass players and, and singers. You know, you change that aspect, it just changes the whole dynamic of the band, you know? Yeah, and, and I think that's why, um, I mean, I'm sure that Rush could have carried on with a new drummer, but it would have been a very different band, and I think I think Alex and Getty kind of realized that, you know, that um, it's kind of just to, you know, let things rest. <laughs> Well, it's just like Led Zeppelin, you know, they, 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 they knew they had something special and there was, and, and, and there's certain things you just can't replace unless you want to change direction, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, and so um, so, so you, you had some great um, guys that influenced you, Dean, but um, I was curious, I always love to ask people like, um, you know, since you're a drummer, um, what was it about the drums that kind of drove you that, you know, um, you, you said, okay, I'm going to become a musician, I want to be the drummer? <clears throat> um, it was basically my uncle. Um, he played drums. 
you know, in high school I was a swimmer, water polo player, uh-huh. and you know, so it was, it, it, I was a very physical guy, you know. And even now I swim and I play water polo with uh, older guys in masters leagues, you know. So we get to compete nationally, you know. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just nice to be able to put a couple sticks in your hand and go pound on something for hours. Uh-huh. Well, and you know, um, the interesting thing about drummers, like I, I've heard a lot of fam- you know drummers tell me that you know. Early on, they played in marching bands. I don't know if that's your story, but um, that they, you know. Yeah. I, yeah, I played in the marching band. I played in the orchestra. Oh, wow. I played in the jazz ensemble. I did all that stuff. And then I was a water polo player, so oh. I was I was a, a, the athletic nerd in high school. Oh, wow. That, that, that That's interesting. So let me ask you, because um, since Leather um, was, you know, has been away for a while, um, you know, the music business is totally... Um, changes you know since since the band first got together you know in, in the 80s i mean for for example i mean um y- y- you know um like i said um they don't even have mtv or headbangers ball anymore i mean it, it's so cool i think to be able to put just be able to put your videos out on um youtube you have your own youtube channel anybody wants to see anything about leatherworth they can go check out the stuff there i mean that's something that was e- even the internet you, um is something fairly new you know Yeah. You know, the music industry, is, it looks like it's kind of disappearing, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, and that's why I say I, I respect a band like Leatherworth that um, you guys could probably just live off, um, you know, your catalog of music, but I dig the fact that you're still putting out new music for your fans. I mean, um, for that reason alone, I'm going to go, um, you know, pre-order a CD because after listening to last night, I'm like, man, that's a damn good CD. And the fact that um, it's the first thing this band's done in, you know, a couple of years... Um, yeah, yeah. And our last studio record was in 2006, so it's been, you know, like 17 years. Oh, oh, sure. And, and, and see, that's and, and that's the um, that's the thing. Like, um, you're probably finding too that um, um, with the way the music business is, you're totally a lot more than you would have maybe back in the um, early days of band. Had to really promote the hell out of your your, your own your own band as opposed to back in the day, you know. <laughs> yeah, it was all, you know, it was ran by, by you know, money, people that had it, and the people that had it, you know, so it's, yeah. uh, yeah, and, it's, just, it's just different today, dude, you know, we're getting older, and, you know. And so how the fans, res- um, like, um, since you announced that you're having this new album, how have the fans been responding? Um, well, we're getting a lot of younger new fans, you know? That's interesting, because, um, you know, I, I would I would think that um, a band that's been around, um, as long as Leatherworth, you've had, you, you'd have like the diehards, but then um, that's interesting that you would have like new fans that are just kind of also discovering the band for the first time. Yeah, yeah are you there, Dean? Dude, yeah, I'm here. Oh, I was saying, um, so that, that must be an interesting thing to find, find out that you have a bunch of new fans just discovering um, Leatherworth for the first time. It's really weird because, uh, you know, we, we the record's not out yet, so it, I haven't been through that whole process yet, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, and, and that that's kind of a cool aspect because you, you can let people know, hey, um, okay, if you like this new album we just put out, we, we got some older stuff you can um, check out as well. Now, let me ask you, um, anybody wanting to do that, um, are, are the older albums still available or can they, you know, go on Spotify or um, Amazon and, and check it out? And talk about your older releases. Oh, I say like, okay, if somebody wants to go and, you know, just discovering leather, and they find out, oh, you know, you guys got like, um, you know, older albums, or any of the older albums, um, are they out of print, or can people still get those? Um, yeah, they can get some, some of them. Okay, okay, well, um, like I said, Dean, um, it's been a while since we last talked, I really enjoyed um, catching up with you, and um, let's keep in touch, and, um, you know, once the album drops, and... Um, people start responding and you, and you guys go on tour I'd like to talk to you again but um, let's keep in touch and, um, and and good luck on the new album once it comes out hey, thanks a lot buddy yeah and as, as far as the interview we just did I'm planning to post it like um, within the next two weeks once it goes up I will um chaotic riffs magazine